it's finding that balance between what the animal welfare science says and what producers are able to achieve on the ground. Just kicking off, Melina, are yep. you able to introduce your role and what you do? Yep. So um, my role at RSPCA Australia is a Senior Scientific Officer for Farm Animals. So I'm a member of our very small science team. And I guess the purpose of our existence is to make sure that everything um, we say uh, and, and do as the RSPCA is evidence-based. Tell me about the role of science in establishing the standards. Yeah, so we provide um, science-based uh, information and advice and comment at um, a range of levels, so mainly industry, but also to the general public uh, and to uh, consumers, uh, and of course to government as well. Um, so within our science team, um, one of the roles of the farm animal people within the science team is to uh, develop the standards that underpin the RSPCA approved farming scheme. And so are the standards something which you've come up with just once or are they constantly evolving? Yeah, so our first set of standards uh, were published in 1996 from memory, way back in 1996 and those were the layer hen standards. And the reason that we um, brought those standards out was essentially to provide egg farmers with an alternative to the barren battery cage, which is a very common um, egg farming system. Uh, and also, of course, to provide consumers with um, that choice to purchase uh, a cage-free egg. And obviously, since then, the scheme has developed and we have standards for pigs, for meat chickens, for turkeys, for farmed Atlantic salmon and also for dairy calves that are being raised for beef. And so with all those different industries and types of animals, what's probably the consistent thing across the standards for you? First and foremost, the RSPCA standards are animal welfare standards. So they take into consideration the needs and wants of the relevant species and then basically establish requirements that allow for those needs and wants to be met. And so at a high level, if a new industry or area is looking to come in, how would, they, how would those standards be developed for a particular industry? So when it comes to developing new standards uh, for a new species that's going to be joining the scheme, it's a fairly elaborate process. We um, go through um, fairly extensive stakeholder consultation. So we'll be talking to producers, to retailers, to researchers, obviously. But first and foremost, we need to know what the animal welfare science says about the issues within that industry and the issues that affect the, the animals within that industry. So um, every standard uh, development process starts with a, a fairly comprehensive literature review. And so when it comes to changing, amending, updating the standards, how often does that happen and how does that process work? We aim to review the standards every five years or so. And um, again, that's a fairly thorough process. It might take a year, a year and a half before we, we have the standards fully reviewed. We aim to uh, consult all the stakeholders, anyone with an interest in that particular um, farming system or that particular species. Um, is um, provided the opportunity to comment. Um, again, we do a literature to review to make sure that um, we're up to date with the relevant science. Um, and then the standards are published. And so when it comes to balancing what the optimum standard and level is versus what's practical, how, how's that balanced? I think it's important to recognise with the RSPCA standards is that we, do, we want them to be challenging, but we do want them to be commercially viable. And when it comes to the animal welfare science and um, an ideal um, way of uh, farming an animal or um, conducting a certain husbandry procedure, for example, um, that may not be possible or practical in reality, at least not now. So um, it's finding that balance between what the animal welfare science says and what producers are able to achieve on the ground. Um, but at the same time, of course, pushing them to do better. And again, every review of the standard is an opportunity to, to raise the bar and to ask farmers to, to do just that little bit better and work on that, um, that 
aim, I guess, of continuously improving the welfare of the animals under their care. Why are the standards important in helping to address animal welfare concerns across the agriculture industry? So first and foremost, the RSPCA standards are animal welfare standards. As the standards are developed and as the standards are reviewed, they take into consideration the, the needs and wants of the specific animal for which the standard has been written. There are a number of concerns in common farming practices and farming systems that um, result in poor animal welfare. Just think of um, hens in cages, for example, or sows in sow stalls and sows in farrow crates in pig production. And there's a lot of painful husbandry procedures that are carried out on farm animals, like teeth clipping and uh, toe trimming in turkeys and and other, other painful procedures that are effectively unnecessary when you're creating the right sort of environment for those animals. So these sort of things aren't permitted under the RSPCA standard. So really for uh, the farming industry, it's important to recognise that there are animal welfare concerns with some of their practices and that they need to work to address those concerns, not only to improve animal welfare, but also to meet those growing um, consumer concerns about um, you know, what happens on farm and indeed during transport and at slaughter. And I guess it's also important to mention that higher welfare farming does cost more. So if consumers have an expectation that farm animals are raised humanely uh, and treated well on farm, um, that they have a good life but also a good death, then um, there needs to be that preparedness to pay a little bit more as well. In terms of the standards, is there one side that's driving it more? Is it consumer expectation that drives the standards or is it, uh, is it cemented through science? Well, the RSPCA as an animal welfare organisation, obviously our key driver is improving animal welfare across the various farming systems. But there's also a huge consumer driver. Consumers care about, the general public cares about animal welfare. and as farmers, as the industry recognise this concern, obviously in terms of um, sustainability and maintaining their social licence, um, they need to take these concerns into consideration and change practices to meet those expectations. Why are you passionate about working in this area? Why are you involved? For me, it's all about good animal welfare. Uh, and, and in the farming context, um, you know, animal welfare, you talk about providing animals with a good life, but also a good death and the animal welfare science can tell us a lot about what is good and indeed what is bad uh, in terms of welfare. But for me personally, I think it really comes down to um, having compassion uh, and treating animals with dignity and respect. And I suppose, you know, in the end, all of us at RSPCA Australia, um, that's our aim and certainly in my job, um, that's, that's my aim, to ensure all animals have a good life.